the word that enters into your heart, that is what changes life. Amen. Amen. He said, let this command, this word I speak to you, lay it in your heart. He says, put it in your heart, not in your head, not in your mind, but put it in your heart. Amen. Amen. So that it will never leave you again. And that word is very simple, that you should love, we should love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all. Our Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When God is our all, he deserves to get our all. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He didn't say with part of your heart. He said with all your hearts. And when we love the Lord with all our heart, there should be no room to hate somebody because the heart is full. Amen? Amen. A heart full of love has no room for jealousy, for envy, for bitterness. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so to love the Lord with all your heart is for your own benefit, our own benefit, because it preserves the heart. It preserves the heart from heart attack. Who will attack where God lives? Amen? Amen. Only a mad man will attack the White House. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Why? The place is secure 24 by 7. Only a mad man will attack the White House. Even as Nigeria is, only a mad man will attack Castle Rock. Amen. Amen. Try it. You will know that Nigeria have army. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And that is where human beings live. How much more where Jehovah lives. Amen. How much more where the king of glory. The I am that I am. The beginning and the end. The alpha and the omega. The governor of the governors and the president of the president and the rulers of the nations. How much more where he lives? No, how much more where he lives? Who will break in there? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Who will break in into the abode of Jehovah? Who is that person? Think about it. Where just ordinary men called president and governors lives, you can't approach there. And talk about the Lord of all creation. Where he said, I live in you, I move in you, and I move through you. And so, your appearance alone, you are not alone. Amen? Amen. Somebody that was doing masquerade was telling me, he said, Pastor, truly, in our masquerade, we know real Christians and fake Christians. I said, what do you mean? He said, one time, you want to sit down? This is a problem with democracy. And that's where it is in the world. Praise the Lord. We are not democratic, right? Take your seat, please. God is good. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And God said, You are blessed. Whether you are standing, whether you are seated, you are blessed. Praise the Lord. So this guy went on to tell me a story. He said, when they, or he, as a masquerade, when he has spent time to soak himself in juju, he said, one time they were coming out, and they saw a pastor. Normally, everybody will run away from the road, he said. They will run away from the road. He said, but this pastor refused to give way. He was driving. He said he got to him. And told him, you, you didn't leave the road. This car will not move again. He said, the car stopped. The pastor's car. He said, the car stopped. And then they passed. He said, till evening. He told the pastor, go and take your car. The pastor's. Then he told me, he said, pastor. But another time, we were coming. Another pastor was coming. 
Not with car. Just walking. Everybody gave way, but the pastor was coming. He said as he wanted to approach the pastor, he saw a ring of fire around him. Praise the Lord. Those that know their God. Those that have understanding of God. The Bible said they will be strong and they will do exploits. He said as he tried to approach the guy, the fire was radiating. He said he has to withdraw. Now they have to give way for the one Christian. That is the way it should be. Praise the Lord. They have to give way for one Christian. And I want you to know that one Christian in an environment can make all the difference. Just one Christian. Just one Christian that knows his God can make all the difference. But anyway, I don't want to be, I don't want to be distracted from uh, the message on Wednesday, we looked at the benefits, the benefits of loving God. And today, I want us to look at love in giving. Just like the devotional that we've been hearing all through this month about loving God. I'm trusting God that between now and next week, we are going to deal with the issue of love in the area of giving. This is one of the most sensitive issues to talk about in church now, presently. Because there are people that are willing to attack, attack the church for whatever we say concerning the area of giving. There are people that will attack us if we say anything about it. So many Christians have signed on have signed on on not talking about money and talking about giving. But the problem is that we must have the complete word of God. Amen? God is not a beggar. God is not hungry. Neither is the church of God a beggar, nor the church hungry. Amen? Amen. Even if nobody decides to give in the church anymore, the church will still function as normal. Why? Because the church does not depend on man. It depends on God. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And when believers will not give, God will use unbelievers to give. I'm telling you the truth. When believers refuse to support the gospel and give for the work of God, God will still command unbelievers to do what believers will not do and will bless them anyway. Remember, remember, the blessing of the Lord is not just for believers. It is for those that meet the requirements. Amen? That may be a bit difficult for you to understand. Remember, Salvation is about eternal life. That's what salvation is all about. Amen? About eternal life. But there are people that will exercise themselves in the ordinances of God's word that God will bless them here because they have done something to support the work of God according to the will of God. And because they don't have salvation, they will not make heaven. But God will still bless them. It's something that... that we don't understand. If you go back to Genesis, when God says, seed time and harvest shall not cease, was he talking to Christians? No, was he talking to Christians? Who was he talking to? The whole creation. Amen? The whole creation. So we need to understand that when God speaks of our blessings, it's not limited to only believers. It's only open to those that will sign up on God's word concerning the area of that promise. There is something, there is one particular area that you cannot negotiate. That is salvation, the new birth. If you are not born again, you will not make heaven, full stop. If you are not born again, you don't have eternal life, full stop. But when it comes to things like blessings and divine health, let me tell you, 
God have an open ticket to all humanity. All. All. Now, we read, um, we read from um, second, First Corinthians chapter two. Let's open it on Wednesday. We read it, verse nine. First Corinthians chapter two, verse nine. First Corinthians chapter two, verse nine. But as it is written, eyes has not seen, nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man, nor it has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. The Bible said, eyes has not seen it, nor ears heard it, nor has it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. So there are things that God has prepared for those that love him. There are things. And when we talk about loving God, loving God, loving God, some people are saying, How will I love God? What does it mean to love God? Jesus said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Those that love God fear the word of God, they keep the word of God. And so if you are a keeper of his word, then the love of God is in your heart. Many don't understand what it means to love God. They think it's just giving. And like we read today in the devotional. But I want you to know that you can give without loving. But you can never love without giving. It's not possible. It's not possible. And giving is living. Amen? Amen? Unfortunately, sometimes we pastor makes it as if, if God is hungry and begging people for money. But that's not true. Amen. Amen. That's not true. Not the God I serve. Not the God I know. I know that my God is able to raise helpers for the kingdom, for his kingdom all over the world. Amen. I shared a story with you, a true story. A man of God in Ogun State, in a village in Ogun State. Ogun State is just beside Lagos. Amen? Amen? He had a project God asked him to do. And this man of God has prayed and prayed and believed God for this project, for money. And the money was not forthcoming. In the village, God asked him to do something and there was, there was, there was nobody giving for it in the village. And so God wanted to show that he is God. Amen. Amen. God spoke to somebody in America and said, I want you to go to Nigeria. I want you to take so 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 money and go to so 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 place so that the need will be met there. That person has never been to Nigeria before. And at that time, it was very difficult to get Nigerian visa. Nigerian visa. You may not know that Nigerian visa is one of the most difficult to get. Amen. And so this man has never been to Nigeria. He went to the embassy. He got the visa without any, any stress at all. He got the visa. He bought his ticket. He came into this Nigeria. This Nigeria. This Nigeria. He entered into a taxi and told the man where he's going to Ogun State. The taxi drove him all the way to that place, to a village. He has never been to Nigeria before. And I told you before that the Holy Ghost is the best navigation. Amen. He can direct you to exact 100% accuracy. Yes. And the man got there and saw the man of God. He said, are you so, 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 so? He said, yes. He said, God sent me to give you this. And the man was shocked. Imagine being in a village. And the white man showed up and said, God sent me to you. When people fail to do it, God will even use animal to do it. That's the truth. We should be praying that God will not use animal to replace you. Amen. We should be. I am very serious about it. Because he is God. Sometimes our generation have not seen God in the dimension that they saw him in the New Testament. That's the problem. We have not seen God in the dimension they saw him in the Old Testament. Because we are in a season of grace. 
When God said, I will wipe out an entire community, I will wipe them. Nobody will ask me questions. I will remove them from the face of the earth. Why? Because of their rebellion. God said, I will wipe up, not a family. Family is small. He said, the whole community, I will abolish their existence on earth. Nobody will remember they lived there. And God did it. Amen. And all that was left was empty ground. The very ground opened up, swallowed them. And that's it. And the white man made a U-turn with his taxi, went back to airport, joined the same flight that brought him, and went back to U.S. He was in Nigeria for only a few hours. Amen. Amen. So when we talk about loving God, you don't know their power. And that's why the Bible says that our eyes have not seen, neither has he entered into their ears, neither can the heart of any man comprehend what God is able to do. But in Romans 8, he said, for we know that all things, all things work together for our good, to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. When it comes to the area of giving, it's a sensitive issue, especially looking at the way the economy is. But actually, this is the time for believers to prosper. This is actually the time for the believers to flourish. The Bible says when there is a casting down, we shall say that there is a lifting up for us. But how many are speaking about being lifted? How many are saying that this is my season for lifting? And that the word of God will not fail in my life. It is my season. In Luke 21. The Bible said that Jesus approached the offering they were given. I think we should open it. Amen. Luke chapter 21. We read from verse 1. Amen. Amen. The Bible says that Jesus looked up and saw the rich putting their gift into the treasury or putting their money. Jesus looked and saw the rich putting their gifts into the treasury. And he saw also a certain poor widow putting in two mites, two coins, small coins, Amplified Bible says. Amen? So Jesus said in verse 3, Truly, I say to you, that this poor widow, this poor widow has put in more than all. For all these, out of their abundance, are put in offerings for God. But she, out of her poverty, out of her lack, she put in all the livelihood, all the livelihood that she had. Are we talking about giving to God? All the rich just threw in their own. But this poor widow, poor widow, poor widow, is the only one that Jesus acknowledged. Not that she gave so much, but she gave from her heart. Amen. She gave from her heart. She gave from her heart. She gave from her heart. From her heart. Amen. We don't know that Offering time is one of the most special time in church because that can determine how you go back home in terms of blessings. We don't know it. And so we, we, we treat offering time sometimes jokingly and carefreely. It shouldn't be like that. That offering, that offering basket that is stretched out to you, it is... Jesus' hand that is stretched out to you. It may be an usher. It may be a worker. And let me tell you a true story. A true story. The person it happened to, she was the one sharing it with me. We were, because we were in the same church together then. And I, I was a pastoral assistant. And then we went to visit them. And she began to share the encounter of what happened to her on Sunday. And she said, Brother Afa, I'm still in shock. I said, why are you still in shock? She said, what happened to me? And they were very rich. The husband was an ex-ambassador. They lived off Okwebi at that time. in Allen. And then she said, 
during offering time. As the offering was going, he said the usher came. The usher came to her with the offering basket, offering bag. She said she knows the usher, but when the hand was stretched towards her, she looked. It was a hand covered with white all the way up. It wasn't the usher. It was Jesus that came to collect it from her. Praise the Lord. The same ushers. The same ushers. She had squeezed that small money to put in the offering bag. She had squeezed that something small to put there. And then, yeah, I think she put it, right? She put it. She always have what she put, and they were rich. This Sunday morning, the ushers came to her again to put the normal thing. But it was Jesus that took over the offering bag. She said she looked. She didn't see the person but the hand. She looked. And there was white, wearing white all the way, just to the shop, But the hand was straight. And she looked. She took her wallet. He took women purse. She said she opened her purse and poured everything inside the offering bag. She was the one sharing it. She opened. She opened. She opened. Because the hand was fixed on her, refused to move. What will you give me today? You know, we, we, we can shout and dance. We can shout and cry. But when it comes to offering, that is when God knows whether you've been touched or not. I'm telling you what the woman shared. And she said from that day, that fear, when, when it's offering time, when she sees a basket, from, she'll just <laughs> open her bag. And... Praise the Lord. The offering time, let me tell you, the offering time is the most graceful time for your turnaround. Because at the end of the day, when we worship God, when we praise God, when we do all that we do, it is when that offering bag is stretched forth to you that will determine whether you love God or not. I'm telling you the truth. And that woman, and that woman, that one, one encounter changed her life permanently. And so she said when she sees offering bag, she's afraid. She's afraid. And that is why those of you that take offering, pray that your hand will be the hand of Jesus when you are collecting offering. Pray that prayer, especially the ushers. Don't treat offering time as a common time. Destinies are attached to the time of offering. We, <laughs> I said to you, God is not broke. God can never be broke. God can never be poor. Jesus said that the woman that gave all her livelihood gave the most because that is one thing we don't like. We don't like comparing our giving. They said, well, why are you comparing my giving? But then Jesus did that, just did that. Jesus said, compare the widow and those that are rich. He said, the rich gave out of their abundance. They gave out of their wealth. He said, but this woman, she gave. At, she gave out her entire livelihood. All that she had. Where did she get such faith? I want us to see something in 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Something that Apostle Paul was talking to us about. Amen. From today, you will never play with offering time again. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 8. I don't know what it says in your Bible, but it says in mine, excel in giving. Amen. Amen. Do what? Excel in giving. What does it mean to excel? What 
What does it mean to excel? Second Corinthians eight. Second Corinthians eight. And I'm going to read from the NIV. Amen? Amen. From verse one. And now Paul said, brethren, brothers and sisters. We want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. I want you to know about the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. What type of grace is bestowed upon them? Brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. Verse 2. In the midst of a very severe trial, in the midst of persecution, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty. So you can see that this church was really broke. Amen? This church was really what? Broke. They were in need. They were in need. In the midst of a very severe trial, their overflowing joy, and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. How can persecution and poverty drive you to rich generosity? How? How can severe trial, which is persecution, the church was going through persecution, attacks, and the church did not have money also. How can such a condition drive you into rich generosity. Why? Because the church in Macedonia understood that their financial state cannot, stop, cannot change by praying and fasting. They understood that looking for anointing to change their finances is not going to work. They understood that one thing that will change their situation is their liberality to others. They may be broke, but they still have something to offer to others. Praise the Lord. And so they were expecting a change. They were expecting a change. They were trusting God. So they wanted to be partners in changing the life of others. Because in changing others, other people's life, your life will be changed. What you make happen for others is what will happen unto you. Praise the Lord. He says, in the midst of a very severe trial, there are overflowing joy. And their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. Verse 3. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able. They gave as much as they were able. And even beyond their ability. And even beyond what? Yeah. Their ability. Ah. Entirely on their own. They did it on their own. They gave as much as they can, and beyond their ability, and beyond their ability, they gave. You know what it means to love God in time of giving. You don't recognize poverty. And I said to you last Sunday, I said, every man have an Ishmael, and every man have an Isaac. Amen? Amen. When it comes to giving, it's your choice how you give God. But just just ordinary giving will not change your situation. Like the widow that gave, gave out of her life, gave all her livelihood. You, when you give, you are not doing me a favor. You are not doing God a favor. You are doing your destiny a favor. Amen? Amen. You are doing your destiny a favor. You are doing your children a favor because you are giving, create a future for your family in Christ. Amen. And then in verse 4, he said, Entirely on their own they gave. Verse 4, they urgently pleaded with us. They pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the lost people. How do you explain this? They didn't have enough. And now they are begging the apostles, please, take our offering. Take our gift. You know what? We want to share in the blessing of God's people. And if you look at them, you wouldn't take anything from them because their condition, you know, one time my father in the Lord came 
and when he came to for holidays, things were really tight. Things were really tight. And I had discussed with him that, that I thank God that he's here. I told him the way it is, that he has been very difficult financially, very, very difficult. And then when he was about to go, I packaged a good envelope, a good envelope. We're not, we're not talking about one or two thousand euros. We're talking about something more than that. Packaged it. And I went to him and I gave to him. I said, Daddy, I want to bless you as usual. He looked at me and said, son, you've always blessed me every time I come. He said, but this time I understand how it is with you. You have told me the circumstances, situation surrounding you. He said, you know what? I am giving you this back. Use it. Use it to change, to do something. And then I was kneeling down where he was seated. I said to him, I said, Daddy, you have taught me if a farmer will not sow because of famine, how will he have the next harvest? I said, Daddy, this is what you have taught me. And I have learned it from you. I said, you are being here is an indication that the situation has changed. There are certain anointing when they step into your environment. If you know how to draw, your life will never be the same again. Praise the Lord. And I said to him, I said, Daddy, please. I prefer a harvest than a seed. Okay. He looked at me. At that moment, he was stirred up in the spirit. And I heard his leg. I heard his feet. And he began to prophesy and declare. That was what I wanted. That was what I wanted. I wanted a declaration that would change everything. If I take that seat back from him, what will I do with it? Amen? Amen. What will I do with it? And so as he was declaring, 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 I knew within me at that moment my situation has changed. Praise the Lord. It didn't change by praying and fasting. It changed by taking advantage of opportunity and sowing the correct seed. And so I understand what Paul is talking about. The Macedonian church, they were begging Apostle Paul, please, in our, in our persecution, in our poverty, there is an opportunity to change it by blessing the church in Jerusalem. Please, please, don't tell us not to give. Don't tell us we must give because our change is in our giving. Very often, what we should use action to change, we use prayer to change. And so it drags, it drags, it drags, it drags. Listen, prayer is not a solution to everything. Amen? Amen. Prayer is not a solution to what? Yes. Everything. Many of you, you will get a prompting from the Lord to give a dangerous seed. And you will be thinking, is it the devil or do I have it? How can the devil tell you to give to God? Is it possible? It's like somebody that said, uh, he woke up and he was feeling like praying, but the sleep was there and he didn't want to disturb the neighbors. Are you serious? When you are in problem, you will disturb the neighbors. Yes, sir. Yes. When you are broke, broke. Listen, poor man is a disgrace. If you like, don't like me for saying it. I'm telling you the truth. Amen? I'm telling you the truth. I tell you, poor man is a... You say, Pastor, how do you know? I've been poor before. <laughs> Amen. Amen. When I say to you, hate poverty, you must do. I have understood the secret of escape. Remember, I told you that salvation is a means of escape. Yes. Right? Escape from what? Everything that the world carries, salvation is an escape route from all the problems in the world. 
We know sickness is there. Disease is there. Death is there. Destruction is there. Stagnation is there. Poverty is there. All the things in the world. Salvation brings a bridge from the world into the world. And very often, when we are talking about money, money begets money. Amen. Amen. You are harvest. You are seed determines your harvest. But yet, but yet, but yet, it's not all giving that is, that is approved by God. It's not all giving that God receives. He didn't receive the one of Cain. He rejected it. Even though it was good, he didn't receive it. Praise the Lord. He received that of Abel. And so we have examples in the word of God that God is not a beggar. If it's not from your heart, keep it. Amen? Amen. If it's not from your heart, keep it. Keep it. The only giving that moves God into your situation is sacrifice. Born from the heart of love. Your heart, your heart is full of love. You, you want to do it for the Lord. You want to give it for the Lord. You even go about locating the need in the house of God. You are asking, is there anything that needs to be done in the house of God? You realize that, listen, one time in business, we had a situation, we had a container that needed to be cleared. And all the people that were to pay us, they refused to. And I've shared this testimony quite a number of times because it was, it was a life-changing lesson for me then. We had about half of the money. And we needed a half to clear the container. And meanwhile, they do more is there and all that. And it was not coming. We pressed people owing us. Pressed, pressed. Nothing was coming. And so Sunday, I said to mommy, you know what? Let's take what we have and give it as an offering. If it's not enough, what do you do with it? <laughs> that would be hard for many to swallow. It's an act of faith. Then we didn't have the issue of transfer like what we do now, you know. We don't punch in. Either you write check or you carry it cash. Amen. And so we took a big brown envelope. Big. Pack the money there. Pack the money. Went to church. Offering time. Give what is not enough away. So that you can start having enough. <laughs> Praise the Lord. How do you know when you have given from your heart? Both the giving and after the giving, you always have this joy. You don't, you don't have regret. You don't have regret. And unfortunately, many people have heard about giving, but not the right way. And so they give without receiving. And they think that it was, it was, it was a con game. No, you don't, you don't get it. You don't get it. You don't understand it. We gave that seed on Sunday in church. Within that week, all the money we needed to bring that country up showed up. The money came to us. Amen? Amen. The money showed up to us. The money came. The money came. And we had enough. And we brought the container out. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. That is what God is looking for. Giving that we challenge him into action. If you be the Lord, my God, I am going to abandon the situation to you. If you like, solve it. If you, if you like, let people insult you in my life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I said to you on Wednesday, or in the prayer meeting, I said, there is a way you will approach a matter before God. Even God will be forced to act. Are you hearing me? Lord, you know that I have served you the way you said I should serve you. And you promise that if I serve you, that you will bless my bread and my water. You will take away sickness and disease. You said with long life you will satisfy me and show me your salvation. You said all these things. You said seek you first the kingdom of God and all these things. And Lord, I have qualified myself in all that. I said, Lord, now... I'm going to evangelize on empty stomach because I don't have food. 
If you like, give me food. If you don't like, if they ask me, I will say, the Lord has not given me food. Lord, it will not be my shame because I'm not my God. Praise the Lord. If they ask me, how? Why are you looking at it? I will say, I'm still, my God has not answered me. It will be your shame, not mine. Some of you think that God does not have a heart. If he doesn't have a heart, why does he give us heart? Are you hearing me? When you heard that Jesus was moved with compassion, where does the compassion come from? And Jesus was moved with compassion for the woman, for the man at the pool of Bethesda. Not born again, not saved. You are born by the blood. You are cleansed by the word. And here you are. You think that God will abandon you. Will abandon you to your shame, to your poverty, to your reproach. He will not show up. Then what kind of God would he be? No, what kind of God would he be? The only way to happen like that if you had abandoned God before. Because what you sow is what you reap. God will never abandon his own. But when his own abandons God, there's nothing God can do about it. Praise the Lord. God still do miracles. God still do wonders. Shout hallelujah. God still, I can share many testimonies. We were, we were in Canada. I think that was 1999, 1989, 1999. We were living in Canada. And then the church wanted to build a new church auditorium, prayer palace. And then the pastor Paul said that he's looking for, I don't know, I can't remember exactly, maybe 100 people that would give 5,000. The church was about four to 5,000 people. It was a big church. And, and so we are building a bigger place. And so he said he needs about 100 people that would give 5,000. And we were all there. And all the people that were coming out, the church was almost like balance, 50% blacks, 50% white, and all that. And all the people came out, not one black person came out. Even though some of them were leaders, some of them were teachers in the Sunday school, not one black person came out for that 5,000 call. And I whispered to mommy, I'm going to change that. Praise the Lord. Did I have the money then? No. I didn't have the money. But I said, I'm going to give 5000 Now, $5,000. Think about it, 1999. Amen? Amen? Some of you were just born that time. Welcome. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Welcome. Welcome. And then on Monday, Tuesday, I got a phone call. And that phone call gave me a business contract that I was not expecting. And within the week, they transferred the money into my account in Toronto, Canada. As the money was transferred, the first thing I did, I went to the bank. I did a bank draft, $5,000. I took it. I remember as I was walking to the church, I saw Pastor Paul. He looked at me, tall man. He looked at me, very wonderful man. He was the one also that taught us in, in uh, Bible school. And he recognized me. He said, he said uh, who do you want to see today? I said, I have come to pay my $5,000. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The announcement was just on Friday. And there is a black person wearing his jeans and T-shirt. Many of you, you are dressing up and making up to get recognition. That's fake. If you want recognition, go before God. Praise the Lord. Go before God. And then, I remember the pastor hit me on the back. He gave me a pat on the back. He said, son, I love your spirit. He said, go and see Sister Margareta. And that was my biggest giving at that time. Amen. Amen. And so I escaped 5,000 level in 1999. I escaped that level in 1999. Praise the Lord. Because whatever you give, you, you rise above that level. 
And then a few months later, we wanted to buy a house in Canada. And I'm telling you what God is able to do for those that love him. It was a big house. At that time, the price was 300 and something thousand dollars. 300 and something thousand dollars back in 1999. Sorry? 340 thousand dollars. Wanted to buy that house. <laughs> it was in a rich suburb. Amen. Amen. Now you are saying, ah, Pastor, you get money. <laughs> I get God. Oh. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I get what? Real God. He never abandons his own. The house was so expensive in terms of because that the banks will not finance me. They said, ah, even though we have put the 20-30% deposit that they demanded, I brought it. Give us the mortgage. They said, no. They said, ah, they look at a black person buying this type of house. Ah, no, 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 no. Praise the Lord. And I remember, when God approves you, no man will disapprove you. Praise the Lord. I told our agent, continue looking. Continue looking. I know my God will do it for me. They may reject you three times. Don't stop. They may reject you seven times. Don't stop. That is the trial of your faith and part of your history. It's just part of the history. It's not the end. And then by about two, four after four, she called me, the agent, and said, he said, Miss Safa, where are you? I said, I am at home. She said, can you rush down to so-so-so place, the lawyer's office? I said, why? He said, something has happened that even I can't explain. I rushed there, said, suddenly, we don't know what happened. The bank has approved your application. The house is yours, just sign. The house is mine. And I signed. And I was saying, thank you, Lord. And as I was about to leave, the agent called me back. He said, Miss Safa, you said that God is the one that did it for you. He said, yes. He said, I want to play lottery tonight. Can you pray also that your God will give me a win? <laughs> Amen. She didn't know the sacrifice that went on before. Amen. Amen. Every sacrifice has a repayment debt with God. Yes. The day he will remember you. Are you hearing me? Every sacrifice, every covenant of sacrifice, it has a remembrance day before God. Amen? I remember one time I was going back to Canada. We just came to Nigeria to do something. I was going back at the airport. They stopped me, customs, and they put my name in their system. They saw the house where I was living. They said I should stand there. I stood. After I waited, they came. And then they began to ask me questions. And then after a while, I got angry. I said, why are you asking me this type of question? You are delaying me. What did I do wrong? And I... The lady looked at me and said, what did you do wrong? What did you do wrong? You live in a house of over 340,000 euro dollars in this place. You live in a rich suburb. I don't even live in that kind of place. I don't have that kind of house. And you are just coming and going, coming and, and you are asking what you did. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither has he entered into the heart of man. What God Oh, serve this God. Serve this God. The Bible said that Isaac dug a well. They fought and took it from him. There was famine, there was no water. But when Isaac digs a well, the water will show up. When the Philistines dig, the water will not come up. And so they fought for him. They fought against him with the first well. He left it. The second well, he dug again, there was water. They fought, he left it. He went and dug again, there was water. Uh-uh. Why are you getting water where no one else is getting? Out of your belly. Out of my belly. Out of my belly. If I stand here, water will go down. And if I move to this place, the water will follow me. The water was not in the ground. The water was in Isaac. Because God said to him, stay here. And I will bless you. Don't go to Egypt. Stay here. 
So the Macedonian church understood that the way to change their state as a church, the way to change their condition as a church was not by praying and fasting. It was by demonstrating their faith in the day of giving. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. One time in Munich, the church in Munich, to pay the rent of the church, we didn't have enough money to pay. We didn't have enough money to pay. And it was 7,000 euro. And then, and I'm telling you, if you love God and you are giving, God will never abandon you. That was December time. And they've given us to the end of December either to pay or they will throw us out. And I spoke to my daughter. And we took all the money that we had in the business, the money we had in the business. We took it and we paid the rent of the church with it. December is usually the busiest time for shops. We have to close the shop that period because we didn't have money to run it. We paid the rent, but we have to close the church. Sorry, we have to close the shop. And people were mocking, pastor's shop has closed. Pastor's business has closed. We said it. We endured their persecution. We endured their mocking. Praise the Lord. Because we were ashamed to open the shop because there was no goods to sell. We closed it because, because we chose to honor God. Instead of the church closing, let our business close. Amen? Amen. And that season came to pass. Today, God is still keeping that business strong and strong and strong. We closed it just for a month, for maybe a few days, for a week or two. We closed it. But for the years gone by, God is keeping that business running. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. What was the rent we paid that time? Sometimes we do more than that in a day. We do more than that in a day. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so when people look at the business, they don't know the sacrifice that that business has made before Jehovah. I say, if you compete with us, you are killing yourself. <laughs> Amen? Amen? We are not of our own. The Lord is our strength. David said, Do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death and fear no evil, for thou art with me. Anybody that gives to God, God is always with you. He didn't say you will not go through the valley. He said you will go through it. He didn't say you will get stuck there. He didn't say you will be consumed there. And I'm telling you, I have enough testimony I can continue sharing with you till, till, till the service is over. But now I've not even finished what I want to read. Verse 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 8. They urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing. Privilege. It's a privilege to give to God. It's a privilege to give in church, if only you will understand it. In this service to the lost people, and they exceeded our expectation. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. How can a poor church exceed expectation? They gave themselves. I want you to follow what happens. They gave themselves first of all to the Lord. And then by the will of God also to us. How do you explain it? So when God said, love the Lord with all your heart. They gave themselves first. You see, that is what. If you have not given your heart to God, you are giving it in the flesh. The entire church, Paul said, they gave themselves first to the Lord. They gave themselves. And then, not only to the Lord, they gave themselves to the apostles, meaning they were under the authority of their pastor. You can't fit into that, that two descriptions and not make it and not have a breakthrough. It's there. Verse 5. Praise the Lord. Sorry, verse, verse 5. And they exceeded our expectation. They gave themselves first of all to the Lord. And then, by the will of God, also they gave themselves to us. Verse 6. So we urged Titus, just as he had earlier made the beginning, to bring also to completion this act of grace on your part. Verse 7. Everybody together. No, again.
again. Please, everybody look at me. What Paul says here is enough to change anybody's life today. Anybody's life today. I said to you that no Christian is supposed to be Paul. I said to you that, isn't it? Yes, Let me go through what Paul said. Again, listen, or you can watch it on the picture, but don't be distracted. Check your neighbor. If your neighbor is sleeping, hit her or hit him. Praise the Lord. Because this is one area. This is one area. You must not miss this. You must not miss it. And this explains to you God's mind. God's mind about prosperity for his people. Paul says, but since you excel in everything, the, the church was good. Is that, is, that, is that not what is written there? He said, but since you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in the love we have kindled in you. That means the love we have stirred up in you. Paul is saying that the church, this Corinthian church, they are good in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in all diligence. And in your love for us, they are good. He said, he said but, but, See that you, see that you abound in this grace also. What grace? Praise the Lord. What grace is Paul encouraging the church? He said, see that you also abound in this grace also. So, you know, you know, <laughs> I said to you there are people they love only in word. During the Christmas or New Year or birthday, they will prophesy you until you fall asleep. And you ask them, <laughs> especially many that wants to get married, when it is their fiancé or fiancé birthday, they will create a fake trip. A fake trip. Amen? Amen? They will travel out of the city. Company send them. Meanwhile, they are locked up inside. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Christmas time, they will run away from the city. Amen. Amen. And I said to you that poverty has no glory in it. The Bible says, hate what is evil. Amen? Amen. The Bible says, make no provision for the flesh. Poverty is evil. Poverty is of the world. It's not of God. The Bible said, every good and perfect gift comes from God. We all know. We all know that there's nothing good about poverty. Amen? Amen. Nothing good. Do you agree with me? Yes, nothing good is in poverty. Nothing perfect in poverty. And so the Bible said, every good and perfect comes from God. He said, hate what is evil. Poverty is evil. Your steps to escape is to hate it. He said, look, I don't want you around me, poverty. No, I don't want you around me. Tell yourself I'm not going to be poor, even if you don't have anything. I reject poverty in Jesus' mighty name. And when you say, say it where people are. I've gotten into trouble with my friends because I said something that was too big for them to comprehend. Some of them got angry. Some of them stopped coming to me. They said, I'm always talking so big. And yet, what do I have? I talk so big. I talk so big. And they left. They stopped coming to the house. This, listen, you know this mouth. Everybody have their own. Hold your mouth. Hold your mouth. Say it's my own. It's my own. Mouth. Mouth is mine. Okay, remove your hand. The Bible says, life 
and death is in this. Amen? Amen. So, you are conditioned reveals your confession. You may, you may be angry with me today. Please, don't be angry with me. Be angry with poverty. I'm trying to bring you out of it. Amen? Amen. If you get angry with me, I'm the wrong person because I'm already blessed of the Lord. And the more angry you get with me, the more blessing I get too. Because I'm telling you the truth of God's word. And I want you to come out. I've given you an example in my own life. And I will continue to give you an example. There was another time that things were so... Now I'm talking about recently, when we were in Christ's embassy, things were so difficult. Things were so tight. It happens in business from time to time. And I opened the warehouse. We got a truck. Then we imported washing machines, fridges, name it, it was there. I said, load all of them. I'm talking about something that happened recently when we were in Christ's embassy. We loaded all those things. I said, go and drop it in church. Ah, I want to give, I want to give poverty away. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There is, listen, that you are angry with your neighbor, he says that you are poor. It's the wrong person. Amen. No, he's the wrong person. Get angry with the devil. You said, I will show you today. You say, I'm poor. That shows you are really poor. <laughs> because if you, if you are not poor, you won't claim it. I'm ready to fight for it. If you say, I'm a poor person, I will look at you as a false prophet. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I say, say, look at them again, false prophet. You cannot look at me by any account and say, I'm a poor person. Even when you hear me, you will know I'm a rich man on the inside. Amen. Amen. I made up my mind long time ago that I'm not going to be poor. No, I made up my mind long time ago I'm not going to be poor. Long, long time ago, even before I traveled to go to school abroad, I made up my How? I said, Lord, I want to serve you. I've realized that nobody serves God becomes poor. Are you hearing me? Many of you, joint department, you are, I don't want them to start monitoring me. No, poverty is already monitoring you. Paul said to the church, but since you excel in everything, if you know how to prophesy, you should know how to come out of poverty. That's what Paul said. He said, you excel in everything. In everything, you are complete. As a church, as a church, the Corinthian church was a very rich church compared to the Macedonians. And Paul is saying to them, you are rich in so many things, but when it comes to giving, you are poor. You are poor. And there are people that are rich spiritually, but outwardly they are poor. Something is wrong. You need to be properly taught the things of God. Paul said to them, you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness or intelligence, and in the love we have kindled in you. He says, see that you also, see that you also. Not just in all those things, when it comes to giving, learn to excel also. So you can learn to be a giver. If the Macedonian church will give their trouble and their poverty away, what is stopping you? No, what is stopping you? You can build a history for yourself. You can make a history for yourself. How much you give is not as important as how well you give. These are two different things. Otherwise, Jesus would not have called out the widow. You can't love God without giving. You can't. It's not possible. Amen. Amen. Many people are angry with their tithe. They said, tithe, 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 tithe is Old Testament. And I, you know, for me, I don't argue with people much when it comes to the Bible. I just have to bring the scriptures. You say that tithe is Old Testament. That is not in the New Testament. Fine. I agree with you. Praise the Lord. I agree with you. But then, do you want New Testament giving? Right? Yes. I agree with you that not much is said about Titan in New Testament, even though it is there, but you claim not to know it. And so since you don't know it, let's leave you with the ignorance. The Bible said those that are ignorant, leave them in their ignorance. So we leave you in your ignorance. 
Praise the Lord. But, let's go to New Testament giving. In Acts chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, the Bible said they gave their houses, their land, and sold it and brought the money at the apostles' feet. Do not tight this time around. Actually, the people that sold and shared the money into two, they died. Acts chapter 5, Ananias and Sapphira. Amen. Maybe what we celebrate today, they deceived the Holy Ghost and they died. And so, do you still want New Testament giving? Oh, well, suddenly you like tithes now. Pastor, let's go back to tithes. I, I, I suppose you will agree, let's go back to tithes. Amen. Amen. Even you are tithing, you can give it wrongly. Have you seen, how many of you before, before you had a girlfriend? I'm not going to say anything now. You had a girlfriend before, let me see your hand. Come on, you were not born righteous. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, all of you here, nobody had one before. You, what, what? I said before, those that had girlfriend. I didn't say now. Praise the Lord. And those of you in the micro church also, you know what I'm talking about. Amen. You've been chasing that girl. And she has been playing game with you. And suddenly she called you and said, you know what, you wanted to take me out. Okay, I'm ready today. What did you say? I'm ready. You can take me out. We can go out for lunch or dinner. He said, you mean it? I mean it. We can go. What time should I pick you up? You can pick me anytime. What time? Six o'clock, seven o'clock. Is that okay? It's okay. It's okay. Your joy is unbearable. After the phone call, yeah, 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 yeah. True or false? True or false? Yeah. Some of you will even there say, Jesus, thank you. In something that Jesus has no hand in it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You went into your room, went into your mirror. It's been long you showered. You jumped into the shower. You shaved. You didn't have deodorant. You used your neighbor's own. You didn't have shoes. You borrowed your neighbor's own. Everything you were driven to make an impression. And God was watching you that day. Just one Angelina. She will not change your life in any way. Angelina, you borrowed everything. You kitted up. And then you, you calculated the money you have. All the money you have in the house was 5000 You enveloped them and put it in your pocket. You began to calculate. If I walk half the way, then I can go with taxi and be a big boy. I've come with taxi to pick you. Chatter taxi. Amen? You, you, you are programming your expenses. And that fact is the only thing you have home and abroad. Do come to a restaurant. What do you want? Chicken salad? Fried rice? He said, said, honey, eat, eat, eat. I want you to know your guy is loaded. Your guy is loaded. (laughs) You want Chapman? Bring Chapman. It's loaded. What about you? Give me Sprite. (laughs) Oh, honey, don't don't you want to eat? He said, no, no, I, I didn't know you. I didn't know you would ask us to go out. I, I just ate the time you called. And so you will suffer hunger for Angelina. You will borrow for Angelina. And at the end of it all, you went to drop her home. You got to her. You said, hmm. Hmm. 
<laughs> Mercy. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He said, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You only have 500 naira left out of 5,000. And you were happy. You were happy. Your foolishness has cost you four five. And you were still happy. You were happy. You were happy. You were happy going home. Going home broke. Going home deceived. And meanwhile, Angelina went home and picked the phone call and said, Hey, correct guy, when are you free? She has fooled you because you are a fool. Are you hearing me? And God said, give me the same 5,000. He said, for what? He said, pastor wants my money. Pastor wants your money. 5,000. To do what? What will I do with your 5,000? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God bears me witness. Every time I ask for us to do something in church, I am first to start giving and continues to give until it is finished. And I will continue to give till Jesus comes. Praise the Lord. But that is why my prosperity does not depend on you. Your, my prosperity, are you hearing me? It doesn't depend on you. Our cost of service in a week, Wednesday and Sunday, our cost of running the service, just the offering here, here does not cover it. I'm talking, about, I'm talking about the cost of having light, the cost of, um, the cost of running everything around. Praise the Lord. Yesterday, the microphone I just went to fix, he said, Daddy, please, I need 30K to fix the microphone. The two microphones, and I sent him 25K. Nobody, we don't talk about such things. Just to fix the microphone, we use it this morning. But nobody knows why we use it or why we didn't use it the other Sundays. It has to be fixed. Praise the Lord. You know how much we spend to maintain the ACs from time to time? Because sometimes some of them will stop working, and then you need to know why it is not working, and you need to pay for it. Like that one now, this morning, I, I noticed that it is not working. The one on pastor's altar. Where is Taiwo? He's not here. He's not working. And so this week, it must be working. Whatever is the problem, we don't discuss these things. And so when you say that church wants your money, pastor wants your money, it's an insult to God. And God sees you as ungrateful. Because you come here, you sit you enjoy the goodness of God. You enjoy the blessings that others has given. Instead of you to bow your knees and thank God, you start murmuring and complaining. What kind of person are you? No, what kind of person? And the reason why so many people are in their, in their difficulties and why others are saying, I want to do this in the house of God, I want to do this in the house. You are the one complaining that church wants your money and the money you don't have. It will be a thing of joy. If the church wants my money. Amen. Amen. I pray that the church will always want my money. Because it means I can never be poor. Amen. We don't understand the way the God system works so. As long as there is outflow, there will be inflow. Yeah. Are you hearing me? With God, impute and output are balanced together always. When we continue this matter next week, you will see where Paul said that, I don't want you to give for others to become rich and you, you become impoverished. Paul said, no, no, it won't happen like that. While you are giving, God is supplying you. And you are giving because thanksgiving in the life of others. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, wherever you are listening to this service, if you, are, if, if you believe that the church needs your money, you are in error. If you believe that pastor is spending your money, you are in error. You know why? Because the church is run by God. And he will always run it. Amen. Amen. Even if I'm not here, nothing will change in this church by the grace of God. Amen. You know why? I have never said that this is my church. It's not my church. 
I actually thank God for the opportunity to minister here. Because God can remove me. And if he removes you, he'll get somebody better than you. Do you understand the way God was? God goes from glory to glory. You need to know it. He is a way maker. God can bring a strange person, arm robber that got born again two days ago, and fill him with grace, fill him with anointing, and he will stand here, he will minister more than you that has been born again for 20 years. And that's God in action. If you are in that, go back to Acts of the Apostles. What happened to Saul? He got born again. Three days later, he was preaching the gospel. It is we that set conditions for those that are born again to minister. Not the Lord. As far as the Lord is concerned, you get born again and your heart is full of joy. Go, poo, go in. Go in. And all that God is looking for is a correct heart. Correct heart. Correct heart. That's why he abandoned Saul and located a, a shepherd boy in the bush called David. And God is in that business. He looks for heart. He looks for correct heart. He looks for good heart. You, offering time, you are holding the only thing in your pocket like this. 2,000, you are holding it. I have also known that people that don't give or people that are stingy, most often they are bitter and they are unforgiving. You know why? The heart controls everything. Your liberality in giving is who you are in your heart. When you are not quick to forgive, when you are easily angered, when you are easily offended, it translates into your wallet. Amen. Amen. Because Jesus said, what comes out of the heart is what is in the heart. It gives me great joy to give. It gives me great joy to be a blessing. Amen. Amen. And I pray our children are like that. Because they look at mom and dad. They see us giving always. And it's not, we give. We give. It is a pathway to prosperity. Pathway to prosperity. Go and ask Warren Buffett. Go and ask Bill Gates. Even Dan Gote, go and ask him. Every great man, every rich man will tell you, giving is the way to life. And how is, how is it that believers are missing it? When we talk about giving, we only talk about money, money, money. If you don't have money, give yourself. Give yourself. I said it. After service, we will serve you lunch by the grace of God. Amen? Amen. It was bought by somebody. It was cooked by somebody. And it will be served by somebody. And you finished eating. And you left your plate and walked away. What kind of character are you? No, think about it. You left your plate there. You walked away. Somebody came and packed the plate you used to eat again. And you are going to say the food was nice. The food was nice. And God will shake his head at your life. Why don't you, when others have eaten, you pack all the plates. You take the blessing that comes from washing it. You say, Lord, wash away poverty in my life. Wash away hunger in my life. When we were just new here, when we moved in, I remember one evening, one night, all the youth, they ate. They set the table here, they ate. Seriously. Who remember that? Elizabeth, John. They all ate and left. The youth, this will have tried me. <laughs> I came out, I saw the table messed up. They ate, they left everything. The Spirit of God just said, be calm. Because if I act myself, they will all be in the police station. I will lock all of them up. You know what? I packed all the dishes. I packed it. John knows it. Elizabeth knows it. I packed all the dishes. I went and washed it myself. And I cleaned the table. When they saw it, they were like, Hey, today may be our day of sacrifice. <laughs> and truly, they deserve to be sacrificed that day. But you know what? 
I didn't utter a word. I only shared it later. I didn't touch them. I didn't say anything to them. I packed all that. And while I was watching it, I was not angry when I was watching it. I was just, and I said to you, there's nothing I cannot do when it comes to the house of God. If nobody will clean here, I will clean it. And when I clean it, it will be better than the way you've been cleaning it. I assure you. Because I have an excellent spirit in me. What is it to be big man? What is big without God? No, what is big in my life without God? If the Lord will leave me, I'll be poorer than the poorest. And so I am who I am today by the grace of God. And my secret of continuing to be who I am and greater is to hold on to this God that has brought me. Paul says, see that you also excel in this grace of giving. And so you must excel in the grace of giving. It's your lifeline. Giving is your, is your life. Don't let anybody rob you of your blessings. If you stop giving, you start dying. Young people, you are full of energy. You are full of strength. You know you can come here in a given day and say, please, is there any work for me to do? We have a lot of work to do at the back to clear the whole place. Yes. It's work to be done. And you don't need pastor to see why you are clearing it. You only need God to see you and your heart. Amen. Even you can go into the place for prayer. As you are praying, you are clearing. I remember when things were also tight in Canada. I would go to the park and I spend two, three hours. I would pray in the garden there. I would pray alone, pray alone. And the miracle always breaks forth. Young people don't have stamina to pray. Social media has robbed you of your energy. Many of you, you can't even stand. You can't even fast a whole day. If you fast like this, you'll be shaking as if you are fever, malaria. And yet, your situation needs pain and fasting to overcome. No, do you understand what I'm talking about? Your situation needs pain and fasting to overcome. Give yourself to the Lord first. Pray. Fast. And then give 